Hi, this is Ant, and today we're going to be looking at the ADSR envelope and how it relates to vacuum, which is the synthesizer that comes with Pro Tools 8. So first, let's look at this diagram. Now, this is the ADSR envelope. Uh, the way this is re represented in this diagram, the vertical axis is the amplitude, and it says here volume or other parameter. So for this screencast, we're going to be thinking about the volume of the synthesizer. Now, the ADSR envelope can affect many other parameters of the synthesizer, not just the volume. But for now, let's just think of it in terms of the volume. Okay? Then the horizontal axis is the time. So this corner here, this point here, is where we press down a key on the synthesizer, and then time moves from left to right. So ADSR stands for Attack, Decay, Sustain, and Release. So Attack is the first portion of the envelope, and it says here, Attack time is the time taken for the initial run-up of level from nil to peak, beginning when the key is first pressed. So you press the key here, and the attack time tells us how long the synthesizer will take to go from no sound to the peak level. And the peak level will normally be set by the volume of the synthesizer itself. Then the decay time. Decay time is the time taken for the subsequent rundown from the attack level to the designated sustain level. Okay, so we press the key and attack denotes how long it takes to get to the peak. Then when it reaches the peak, the decay time denotes how long it will take to go from the peak down to the sustain level, which is here. Okay, so sustain level is the level during the main sequence of the sound's duration until the key is released. So, key on, attack to the peak level, then decay down to the sustain level, and then as long as we hold the key down, it will stay at the sustain level. Then at this point here, this is where we release the key, and release comes into play. Release time is the time taken for the level to decay from the sustain level to zero after the key is released. So, we press the key down, attack dictates how long it takes to get to the peak level, then decay time dictates how long it takes to get down to the sustain level. It sustains for as long as we hold the key down, and then when we release it, release time tells us how long it will take for the sound to return to silence. Okay, so attack decay, sustain, and release. So let's have a look at how this works in vacuum. So in vacuum, uh, envelope two, which is this section here, this is the envelope which dictates the volume of the synthesizer. So this is the one we're going to be looking at for now. Now, as you can see, A, D, S, R. So this behaves in exactly the same way as I've described in that diagram. The other control here, VEL, this is the velocity sensitivity of the envelope. So basically, at the moment, this is on 0%. So no matter what velocity I hit a key with, it's always the same volume. If I turn that up to 100%, if I hit the key quiet, softly, we get a quiet sound. If I hit it more vigorously, we get a loud sound and all points in between. Okay, but for just for the purposes of this exercise, I'm going to put that to 0%. Now, each of these controls, if I click on it at the bottom, you will see it tells us what the value is of that knob. Now, Obviously, we don't see a graphical representation like the diagram, but it it all relates to this. So let's try and recreate this envelope in the diagram using the controls on vacuum. So I'm looking at this attack, and I'm going to take a guess, and I'm going to say, well, I, I'm going to say that attack time is going to be around 200 milliseconds. Okay, so I'll go back to Pro Tools, and so the attack here, I'll turn that up, until it gets to 200 or thereabouts. Okay, 201, that will do us. Okay, so now when I press a key, it will take 201 milliseconds, which is a fifth of a second, because milliseconds are thousandths of a second, to get to the peak level. And remember, the peak level is dictated by the volume of the synthesizer here, okay? 
So you, you hear that sort of slide up. Whereas if I put the attack to the minimum, you hear that's much more snappy because it's only taking one millisecond to get to the peak level, which is one thousandth of a second. But at 200 milliseconds, okay. So let's look at the next part. The decay is longer than the attack on this envelope. So let's say, I'm going to say 400 milliseconds for the decay. So I go back and I turn this up till we get to about 400. Okay. So you see, after the attack gets to the peak, it comes back down again, and it's coming back down to the sustain level. Okay? Now when I look at this, I think that is around 60% of the peak there. So this is already set to nearly 60%, 59. So it attacks up to the peak, then it decays down to that sustain level. Okay, so as long as I hold the key, the sustain level will hold. And then when I let go, it moves to the release portion of the envelope. Now at the moment, release is on minimum, which is one millisecond. So let's have a look at this diagram again. The release looks quite long to me, even longer than the attack. So I'm going to say 600 milliseconds, let's say, for the release. So I'm going to turn that up. So remember, 600 milliseconds, that's over half a second. So now if I press the note and I'll hold it for a while and then let go and you'll hear what happens. So you hear how it fades away at the end when I release the key. So this is how we use the envelope to shape the volume of the sound of the synthesizer. Okay, And just to give you some other little sort of uses of this, so that's quite a smooth sound there. What if we try and make something a little bit snappier? So let's make the attack minimum. And then uh, let's turn the release down, not to minimum, but quite low. So we've got like 30 milliseconds there. And I am going to turn the sustain level down to quite low. So we've got about 20% there. And I'm going to make this decay really short as well so and then we'll hear the sort of sound we're getting there so you hear that's got a very different kind of character to before it's kind of got a percussive edge to it okay so this just gives you a little indication of uh, the kind of shaping you can do with the ADSR envelope okay so um, I'm going to leave it there for now. I'm going to make some more screencasts uh, regarding different stuff we've been working on. But the next one I'm going to do is going to be looking at vacuum in more detail and also seeing how we can use the ADSR envelope to modulate different parameters other than the volume of the sound. So thanks for watching and I'll be with you again soon. Cheers. Oh, and one last thing I wanted to say before I go is... Uh, if you look here at this patch that I'm using, Ant Basic Saw, I've uploaded that to Blackboard. So if you look in the documents section of Blackboard, you'll find this patch, antbasicsaw.tfx. And then if you want to use it in Pro Tools, either on your own system or in, in uh, the teaching rooms, if you open up Vacuum, and if you go up to this little control here on the preset section, and go Import Settings, and then navigate to wherever it is you saved the file. So I've got it there in the downloads. And you would double click on that and import it in. Okay, so that would give you something. So if you wanted to work along with what I was doing, that would enable you to do that. Okay, thank you.